guys welcome back to my channel today we're gonna be doing a few things to skyline i have a few wiring things to clean clean up the only thing i don't have is zip ties at home and that's like a big thing i've always like just stolen zip ties from friends houses like two or three here and there um but i've never actually like bought my own pack of zip ties that i need to do if i have cars we have new gauges and stuff coming in for the skyline so i need to like zip up wiring under the dash and everything to make it all look nice and clean so there's not wiring sticking out for me to kick or like push or you know tear open or something same with the engine bay there's gonna be some wires running through the engine bay for like the boost and afr and stuff like that um, i'll show the gauges later not now but a clean engine bay is what i love to have so of course i have to get some zip ties to clean all up then we also have to get a few little electrical things for help us with a uh, wiring like the pigtails and stuff like that or not pigtails but the like the butt connectors and the little eye connectors that go over the terminals so i'm gonna go in and grab those real quick and then i'll see you guys in a little bit it is like super hot washing right now but i got an assorted a bunch of uh, cable ties there's 500 in here apparently so i mean i don't think i'll be able to use all of them but at least i have an assorted amount and i found something that's kind of cool i don't know if the camera can zoom in too much but right there right there a little z32 sitting right there i feel like z32s are really like underestimated a lot just because the twin turbo ones i heard are actually really really fast for like a stock 90s nissan i heard they're fast maybe there'll be a future project we'll get one day fast forward like two years from now on the channel and i'm just literally driving like a 600 horsepower c32 all right it wouldn't be a cap gilly video 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 cap gilly video without having to get some raspberry red bull from my favorite coffee stand i thought it was right hand drive for a minute but that's the only left hand drive but it's still super super clean what are you doing <laughs> wake up let's go i'm gonna pick them pick you up here in about uh 15 minutes no sorry man Oh man, you suck. Yeah, I know. Okay, bye. So I got my Red Bull. Let's go ahead and head back to the house and uh, take a look at the skyline. All right, we're back home. Oh, excuse the big ass diesel truck that's about to go right behind me. Okay, they're gone now. So what I'm talking about with the or the wiring that's like under my dash is all of this. Now this is, some of this is from when I just installed this uh, new, like I don't even know what this little like knob is right here. I'm assuming they probably had like a sub in it at one point and this is like to control the, the base, but I'm not really sure. So I just tuck that back up. But like all of this that runs from the bottom up into the, the gauge pillar, this is all stuff that I didn't do. I just went off of the old stuff, like this is uh, for the new gauge. Um, I'll go more into depth with this new... Someone just bottomed the fuck out over there. I don't know if you heard that. Anyways, this new gauge right here. Uh, I'll go into more depth with that um, after I get the new boost gauge from Glow Shift. Um, I'll, I'll review both of those at the same time. But this is what we're going to tackle today to try to wire up all this. This is in front of my um, uh, hood, put pole, like hood. I don't know, pop, for the thing that pops the hood. So we're trying to figure out all this just so we can get this all tucked up somewhere so it's not in the way. Okay, so it's been like 10 minutes. Uh, the wiring's a little bit better. Um, it's just out of... It's kind of out of the way of all the pedals and stuff like it used to be kind of like dangling down up in like this area And sometimes I felt like I get caught on it. I was scared to like pull something out of the way But everything's kind of out of the pedal area. It's kind of shoved up there So it's kind of a little bit nicer. You can't really see it when you're coming kind of looking down All you can see is the the blitz turbo timer and a little bit of the wiring right there Which I'm okay with because when the door shows you or the door shuts you can't even see that Next let's move into the engine bay where I have like a constant power wire running so I have a constant power running from the power terminal right here in the fuse box all the way up and then through the cab. That's the constant power for the um, control unit for the AFR gauge. It's already kind of tucked out of the way a little bit, but I'm going to kind of just tuck it more down here, zip tie it to a couple wires, just so it's kind of out of the way of the engine area. Just so if I take the manifold off or something like that, or take anything off in this area, I don't have to get that in the way. Honestly, Do It Center, like wherever I got these like zip ties from, I think Do It or Johnson's, is like they're like the same thing, but I think they're maybe like maybe a... Washington thing only maybe West Coast. I don't know. I don't really know if they're anywhere else, but I know we have them in Washington They have these like tools that were like in like the clearance section and these are like five bucks for all three of them These are great like this if you don't have tools that like come in your car Hold on. I'll show you real quick if you don't have tool bags in your car. Like what are you doing? Like, I literally have this whole Tool bag inside my skyline just in case something breaks I have like sockets, screwdrivers, everything I need in here just in case something happens. This is definitely a must to have in your car in case something happens. I mean, I have literally a tool bag in this car and I have it in my Skyline or my Z over there. Little fun story, the second day I actually had this car, um, 
I blew an intercooler coupler on the side of the highway and I couldn't, I didn't have any tools with me to actually fix the intercooler vibe, like take the coupler off and then finagle it back on and then tighten it back down. Um, this car had a huge blowing, this one intercooler pipe, like this, like it had a huge issue when I first got it. It did it like three or four times in the first week I had the car. And there was actually a guy in a Pandem R32, um, R it was a wide body like Rocket Bunny Pandem R32 that pulled over, it was orange. I think I still have the, maybe I'll put the Snapchat video inside this video real quick. Rory, if you're watching this, you're super dope. Dude, I've never met this guy before and he just saw me on the side of the road and pulled over and he literally drove me to the next town to get to an auto zone to buy this kit of Duralast tools just so we can take the intercooler pipe off and uh, remount it. Literally not even like two minutes before he showed up, I was like on the State Farm map about a call uh, roadside assistance to come pick my car up. And my parents would have not have been happy the second day I would have bought a car and I would have had the tow at home already. Not gonna lie, this car in like the three, four months I've owned it has left me stranded on the side of the road more times than my Z has and I've had my Z for over two years now. I'm slowly stockpiling parts for the Z2. Uh, this is some rear camber arms for the Z, and then I'm gonna order the tow arms and the bucket delete kit too. There's gonna be big things coming for my Z. Um, I'm gonna get the full rear suspension going on, and then I'm gonna do um, new wheels and everything, and I wanna do a complete track setup, and then a chassis matter front splitter. There's um, a place called the Ridge, and there's also a place called um, Pacific Raceways around here, and they both do like road racing on it, and I really wanna get into that. Drifting's fun, but I think going like 120 into a corner is also a lot more fun. So I was just gonna end the video with the, uh, um, just like a little slate that says I forgot to end the video, but I think that um, we should go to a parking garage and talk real quick. The video actually I filmed, um, that you just saw, I actually filmed it like two days ago, but I just never got the time to end it. I'll do a little cold start in my Z. talk to the camera just like by myself in a like public place too often but I think I need to this time because I need to say a few things So up here by the parking garage, um, there's actually security that was like kind of patrolling around. So I don't know how long I could be here. Um, there's no one here at all, which is good. So I can like freely talk, Fre freely talk. <laughs> so I haven't been like the most active on here and I think I know why. I've been kind of just giving it a lot of thought these last few days. We can throw it back like um, a long time ago, a long time ago. So I've always had the dream of having nice cars and always having two dream cars. This is obviously, everyone knows, my 2003 350Z and then I have a 1994 Nissan Skyline GT25 ST, GTS, GTS 25T, yeah, that's the right word. I actually did YouTube a very long time ago, back when I was about 10 years old. Um, and before that even, I think I did um, in the fifth grade, yeah, in the fifth grade, um, around when I was like 10 years old, I used to film like singing videos. Now it was videos of me singing um, to the camera and I had like five or six but singing was like a dream that I had and it was just obviously just not a dream for me. I have like issues talking in public and I have issues like freely yelling and stuff in front of public. That's why I'm literally in an empty parking lot with my car. Then when I was um, around 11 years old, I filmed gaming videos. A lot of it was just touring my Minecraft worlds and stuff and uploading that to a channel that's like I don't even remember the name to anymore. But then obviously I deleted all those just because I got embarrassed of those. The third channel I had, the number three, was a channel that I filmed vlogs with all my friends. This is back when vlogging was like just a new thing. I think I was like 12 or 13 at the time. I keep looking back to see if the security guard pops up right there. I can just imagine him just like popping up and coming to tell me to leave. So I filmed vlogs and they were just kind of like when vlogging first came out. And I thought they were funny. I mean, I was like 13 years old, so it was like 13 year old humor. That's channel number three that I've deleted everything on. Skipping through to junior high and high school, I didn't really do anything on the social media then. I just kind of did Instagram and stuff. Then out of high school, I started getting on TikTok. Now the TikToks I were putting out there were not very like entertaining at all. Most of them were just like stupid, cringy, just like not even funny. They were just cringy. 
So obviously, if you go on my TikTok now, um, none of those are on there. I like got embarrassed again, so I like deleted all those. And I'll tell you why I got embarrassed. I had this girl that I knew in high school. She um, saved a bunch of my videos that I had because I allowed it for you to save it. And then she showed it to a bunch of people at that party. And she kept showing it to more people at parties. And then she kept showing it to more people. And there are a bunch of people that like weren't really into social media. So they didn't understand what I was doing. So they thought I was just a weirdo. And ever since then, everyone kept making fun of me. Oh, you're the kid from TikTok. You're, you're that guy that makes the cringy TikToks. Yeah, I did for like a month. The TikTok content was a content I was not proud of at all. I was just feel like it was just I someone couldn't watch it in front of me or else I would cringe myself and if I cringe at myself have watching someone else watch my content how am I supposed to make that type of content I think there's something coming up I'm gonna check I'm, I'm gonna pretend like I'm taking video or taking photos of my car oh there he is I think he just came up to make sure I wasn't doing anything illegal but I'm just filming a video and taking photos He's literally parked right over there. He's literally just sitting there, just parked. But I guess we'll continue with the video. I was super embarrassed of the YouTube content that I was making. Um, not YouTube, TikTok talk content I was making. But I feel like my YouTube content, I've never been cringed at. YouTube content's always been like the content I love making. It's always been the content that like, I'm proud of showing people at like a film festival or anything that I don't like. It, it, the YouTube content for me has always been not embarrassing at all. At the beginning, we did have a lot of cringy videos just because like every other channel does. But I think over the course of the year that I've been doing YouTube now, it's been a lot less cringy, I guess. He's, hey, by the way, that's, a, that's, that's like the transit security. I don't think he's actual like a cop or anything like that. He probably just called the cops, but I'm not really doing anything, so. But I think it's time for the official announcement. Um, I'm gonna be making videos once a week now. Uh, every Monday there's gonna be a new video and that's something I should really, I'm gonna really, really strive for. Um, I really kind of feel like I've been like cheating myself a lot recently with YouTube. I feel like I've been like, saying that I have no content, blah, blah, blah. I always make excuses, but most of the time when I say I have no content, it's because I'm not doing anything. And what I mean by doing anything, I mean I'm literally just sitting at home on my butt. So with that in mind, with kind of just giving a little brief story of what I've been on social media and how I've kind of transformed into the person now where I don't really care what I post on YouTube at all as I know it's good content and I know my TikTok's been cringy before. All those are gone now um, after being made fun of. I mean, I can't get mad at the girl who like saved all my videos and stuff like that. I put them on the internet, I put them on there, I put everything else on there, like, I can't get mad at someone for saving something I put on the internet. It's like showing someone one of my Instagram posts and me getting embarrassed, like, I was the one that posted, like, why, why should I be embarrassed at all? Go and like, comment, subscribe. I upload once a week now, just just one time now, just on Mondays. And obviously, if YouTube starts working out, I'll create more time for it and be able to post maybe two to three times a week. So that's gonna be it for this video. That's it till next week. Later.